talk about a topic that I love, and that's making government work more efficiently. To start with, I want to acknowledge the individuals who are standing with me today, just some of those who have played a crucial role in producing the savings that we will celebrate today. Department of Central Management Services Acting Director Janelle Ford, Department of Revenue Acting Director David Harris, Department of Labor Director Michael Kleinick, and Deputy Governor Christian Mitchell for their work. I want to thank them in breaking down the silos and finding savings across our agencies. And of course, Deputy Governor Dan Hines for pulling everything together in the name of using taxpayer dollars more effectively. And I also want to thank, of course, the Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton for her tireless efforts and her partnership in the governance of this state. As a pragmatic progressive, I'm a passionate believer that fiscal responsibility and progressive values go hand in hand. In the past, irresponsible management of state revenue and a failure to invest in the long-term health of our state and its people put us in a challenging fiscal position. So since I took office, I've asked my senior leadership and our cabinet members to look to root out the inefficiencies in state government and to more effectively deliver services to the residents of our state. And I've been prudent and cautious about the investments that we've chosen to make with an emphasis on economic growth and jobs, raising the standard of living for working families while making sure that Illinois is living within its means. We balanced the state budget and we did it with Republican votes. We paired that budget with a historic bipartisan capital plan that has already begun to upgrade our roads and bridges and create jobs throughout the state. And that too was another achievement that came from working across the aisle. Directionally, Illinois is on the right path. We've seen improvements in the financial well-being, the health, education and safety of our residents across every region. Illinois economy today supports 6.2 million jobs, a record for this state and has the lowest unemployment rate in state history. We have more workers in the workplace in part because we expanded childcare. We're producing more skilled labor because we made vocational training available and community college more affordable. For the first time in nearly two decades, every major region in Illinois is seeing job growth with some of the state's smaller communities making the most impressive gains. Our initiatives to increase equity by increasing the minimum wage, by enforcing equal pay for women and minorities, expanding apprenticeships and setting strong diversity goals in public works projects are helping more families earn a better living and making Illinois' economy work better for everyone. Next week, I'll unveil to the General Assembly the proposed budget for fiscal year 2021. Our plan to continue making the prudent investments that have restored and renewed opportunities for our working families this past year will be on record for all to see. I believe strongly that effective government demands efficient government. And it's been a point of pride for my administration to act as wise fiscal stewards of Illinois' limited state resources, maximizing operational resources and saving hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars. I'm proud to announce that for the coming year, our efficiencies and initiatives will yield at least $225 million in savings and will put the state in a position to save more than $750 million over the next three years. That starts with the landmark labor agreements that we have with our state workers who had a huge target on their backs for the past four years. My predecessor treated them with scorn. He belittled their contributions. He aimed to undermine them at every turn. What he neglected to understand was that when both parties come to the bargaining table in good faith, there's an opportunity for both sides to win. In this case, workers who went for four years without a raise received reasonable cost of living increases of 11.5% over eight years. And for the state of Illinois, we achieved substantial health care savings, something Bruce Rauner tried but failed to achieve by going to war. 
As a result of our bargaining, the upcoming fiscal year's budget will spend $175 million less. And over the life of the contract, the state will realize $650 million in savings. These contract savings are just one way in which we are managing taxpayers' dollars better. We're consistently working to reduce waste and identify savings. Today, my administration is releasing our first set of efficiencies, including the elimination of redundant or obsolete boards or commissions, long-term savings initiatives uh, in agency operations, and potential agency consolidation. Notably, I've asked the Department of Labor and the Department of Employment Security to explore a merger of their operations, providing the public with a one-stop shop for employment matters that will operate in line with the majority of state governments across the United States. As a result of our work to reduce spending and increase efficiency, our state agencies are already delivering better services to our residents and finding savings along the way. Just to highlight a few, the Department of Revenue will generate $15 million in fiscal year 2021 savings through new technologies to improve audit and compliance. When fully implemented, these investments are expected to generate over $100 million annually for state and local governments. The Department of Corrections streamlined and cut back on temporary assignments and overtime, reducing expenses by more than $25 million annually. And the Office of Management and Budget worked with Comptroller Susana Mendoza and Treasurer Mike Frerichs to identify better practices to tackle the previous administration's overdue medical bills, saving the state $15.7 million in late payment interest costs in fiscal year 2020 and additional, an additional $25 million in fiscal year 2021. There are many more examples. All in all, these changes represent more than $225 million in budgetary relief for fiscal year 2021 alone. And there's still more that will be done. In sum, so far these changes amount to hundreds of millions of dollars of savings this coming fiscal year and much more in years to come. And since every dollar we work with here in state government belongs to the people of Illinois, the only responsible choice is to ensure every dollar spent is a good one. These savings also mean that when Illinoisans send their children to school or drive down our roads or enroll in Medicaid during a tough patch or enroll at our public universities, they're getting a quality, accessible, efficient, and effective set of services that they deserve. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, part of the purpose of that memo, Hannah, was to make sure that we were surfacing the opportunities to make government more efficient. So we really forced the agency heads to think hard about what would you do in the event that we needed to make significant cuts. There were many things that were recommended from each of the agencies. We chose from those things the things that we thought were uh, would not deteriorate the services that people get for our state, but that would make sure that we're operating more efficiently. So that was really the purpose of that exercise. But as you can imagine, all of those things are things that we have in lists, uh, opportunities for us to look at other savings. So this is like the defense first set of efficiencies? That's right. Are coming this spring? Are you gonna roll them out monthly? It's an ongoing effort, as you can imagine. You're constantly looking. I think everybody behind me would tell you that um, you know, these agencies are large. There are some of them have thousands of people in them. Um, they have many locations. There's a lot to look at to try to find efficiencies and make it more effective for people. Um, and we've asked them to just continually stay on top of this question and surface to us how we might save more money. Every dollar that we can save and waste, for example, that we can identify is a dollar that we can save for the taxpayers or a dollar that can be as we need to um, to you know, make sure that people can afford to go to college in our state. 